Hello folks, uh, I am Meatloaf. <laughs> yeah, eat me. <laughs> anyway, um, today I'm going to teach you how to do banjo rolls on a guitar. Um, some of this will actually be meant to simulate banjos, but uh, most of this is actually um, more technique than anything else. Okay, um, Country players are going to dig it. A lot of people are going to dig it. This is uh, all finger picking stuff. Okay. So, um, what you'll end up with, um, I'll show you the country end of it. Um, if you actually want to go the banjo route, you'll end up with stuff like this. Okay, that type of thing. Or you can even do like the, um, oh, even, God, who was it, Eddie Van Halen? See? Yeah. Had that kind of stuff on a finish what you started, but um, you will find uh, other players who did really cool things with them, like a. Um, okay, so you get that kind of thing. And we'll be having Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff we can be doing with this on different strings too. Okay, so the, a lot of them will have muting little clicky clickies in there. Uh, like um, people from South Africa talking with the clicks. You know, talking to each other like... So you'll have... You know, that kind of thing. So let's get down here and get down with our bad selves and uh, show you what's going on with this thing. Um, okay, the basic banjo roll will consist of this. If anybody wants to know what this guitar is, this is a, um, of course, some of my favorite, the very high end, um, made in Japan. Why? Uh, do I have so many made in Japan guitars because they're made better in USA? I know so many people are just so USA because they pay more money for that USA on top, but do they make better guitars? Still, no. But if you want a USA guitar, buy yourself a USA guitar. Um, anyway, cool little, uh, uh, what do they call these? The Aerodyne Strats. Okay, so they are very groovy guitars and have the binding and the carved tops and so forth just major um, exceptionally cool axes matching headstock okay just cool guitars all together um, the basic picking pattern on something like this I'm going to go ahead and show you um, on four different strings here real quick I will get in nice and tight here for you um, I want your thumb on the D string and then each of your fingers going down. We're only going to use three fingers, well, actually two fingers and a thumb. So a thumb on the D string, first finger on the G string, and your middle finger on the B string. Okay. Okay, so the actual picking pattern I want to concentrate on right now um, will be thumb middle finger on the B string, G string, okay, so thumb, middle finger on the B string, first finger, G string, thumb again, and then we're going to take our middle finger and switch it to the high E string, okay, thumb, middle finger, first finger, thumb, so you're just doing thumb, and B, G, D string, and finally ending up on the E string. Okay, so that will be the actual rhythm. Okay, now the first chord I want you to work on uh, with this just so we can get something cool happening is actually going to be a G chord okay in which on the um, ninth fret 
right here with your ring finger on the D string, 7th fret, 1st finger on the G string, and finally on the B string. Okay, we have our middle finger at the 8th fret. Okay, so that's actually a G chord. Okay, but we're going to do a um, G suspended second by leaving the E string open. So now, if I back out of this whole thing a little bit and do that same thing. Okay, same pick, picking with your right hand. Okay, so that'll, that's how it'll sound. Okay, again, nice and close. Okay, so uh, you got to get that roll going. to the banjo rolls is getting all that stuff going. Okay, so that just takes a while to get used to, just like anything. But there's going to be so much more that we can do with this. But right off the bat, let's get all this cleaned up and utilize this one. Then we'll move on to how else we can abuse and use it. This is a typical G chord, G sus2. Now if you go over a C chord, okay, so a regular C chord, all you have to do here is actually move your ring finger back one fret. Okay, that actually plays perfectly over top of a C chord. So you got G. cool one is going to the D. This is a weird formation, but it is um, pretty weird. Okay, this is first finger, second fret, first string, middle finger, third fret, second string. Okay, so again, E string, second fret, B string, third fret, and however you want to play it. I play it with the ring finger because I can reach it that way. Some of you might have to use your pinky or might just like to. But 5th fret on your G string. Okay, now here. You can choose to do it whichever way you want to. You can still use all four strings since you are in D. Okay, so you can use your choice but what I'm doing is going from doing a pull off off of the high E string and I'm kind of ending up on the um, open E string so what I'm doing down here doing this thumb then pull off then I'm using my first finger twice okay so that's how the difference is thumb middle finger on the high E string pull off up with your first finger up again, then middle finger back on the high E string, open. Okay, so those are the three positions. Again, the G. Oh, sorry. Okay, so it's just that kind of a thing. And, um, that's just something to work with. That's just over G, C, and D. Okay, 
I'll give you those too because it's all part of that roll. <laughs> Okay, that's all still banjo rolls, okay? But again, with our African clicking noises. Okay, so to come up from the G and go. Okay, at the end. Okay, so what I was doing. And then just kind of stopping. Okay, all I'm doing there is going the, um, type of chords, um, which is your, this, <laughs> okay, so middle finger, first string, third fret on your high E string, and then just your, uh, ring finger on the fourth fret on your G string, and okay, well now we're going to leave our B string open through all of this, okay, let's get all this on camera. Okay, thumb on the G string, then all these are going to be pull-offs on the high E string. Okay, so thumb down, middle finger is going to be waiting way, to, way over here. Okay, so pull-off, then you're doing first finger on the B string with a clunk, a click and a thumb on your G string with a click, okay? Okay, you Okay, so let's do what we have to get. That will become very, 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 very useful in a second. Plus, we're going to be using that exact same thing through a lot of the rest of this lesson. Very chicken clucky sounding. You can let them ring as much as you want. You don't have to just cluck along with me. You know, what the cluck? You can let them ring, whatever. It's your guitar. Okay, um, right on up, you just go to the 5th and 5th on the E and B string. Okay, I'm actually just doing that for now. So grabbing the G string and the E string. Just actually giving them all one staccato, simultaneous pluck like that. Hitting the thumb anywhere on your G string, all the way up to 16th fret, and then 15th fret on your high E string. So stick 16th fret and 15th fret. So, okay, so you have. Continue to mess around with that if you want. Continue with the exact same thing you did. Mess around with pushing your first finger up in the air, keeping your ring finger where it's at. So, same thing. Okay, so same type of thing. Um, so, that's basically that. That's an idea for you. Um, another cool way to get something going here is in the key of E. Okay, so I'm doing an E7. Okay, this is nothing more than taking a D chord and just moving it up two frets. Okay, and now in like your regular D7, you would just go like this and actually put your first finger back here and then finish out your D chord. It just wouldn't be this way, it'd just be a D7. <laughs> 
let's just take that whole thing, make it E7. Okay, so we have a low E string that we're not going to use. You can use it if you want, just know that it's there. Okay. Everything here is going to be done just on the three strings. So just on your, let me try to get out of the shadows here. Um, just on the G string. Okay, again with the pull-offs on the high E string. So we're going to do thumb on your G string. Your first, I'm sorry, your middle finger on your high E. Pull off. Then B string. Now, how is this in any way useful? Here we go. Okay, this is really cool. And, um... Okay, so you're just doing an E7. Take it down a half a step. Another half step. hitting it with your thumb on your G string open hammer on the first fret then your two fingers pull up okay can we get it all in here I don't know I didn't think this out but who cares okay so you can I like doing that little bit bit. Okay, that's all it is. That's doing everything. Okay, now you can do it chromatically, which is not as cool as this. Okay, this here actually comes out uh, directly on a beat when you're playing. Okay, so you've got to uh, be like... nice to do a gliss that's what this is at the end okay the real staccato thing on the high E string okay so we're doing a bunch of clicky clickies again okay. so after the ham or pull off First finger, thumb are going to be South African clicks. Okay. Only hitting the high E string. Going up to the fifth fret with that one. Okay. Pull off. Hit the high E string. I'm sorry. Hit the high E string here on the 6th fret, then our clicks. Then you finally grab all three strings, so... I oftentimes will add my thumb in. And grab that every other fret. So every other one. Okay, when you do it faster, you'll see why. Okay, so 
just kind of a cool sounding little lick. Um, coming down from there, that just gives you from E all the way up to E again. <laughs> Yeah, that's only actually one measure, you know, it's a bar. That's how quick it'll take place. Okay, you can do it. So you see where that can come in kind of handy. Okay, um, other places that it is really handy also is um, just coming on your uh, metal three strings being your D string again where we started at D, G, and B strings. So coming down off of a D, uh, G, back into a C, so you're in C, and back in. Okay, so. Okay, that is the same thing we were doing before with the original banjo rolls, but again, we're only concentrating on the three middle strings. D string with your thumb. Let's go ahead and get up here. We're skipping the G string altogether as far as what we're playing here. So do um, right here, first finger, 12th fret on the D string and your uh, middle finger, 12th fret on the B string. Thumb, B string, hold up. And then two more uh, African clicks. Do the pull off. Okay, I'll get this on the camera. So you're on G, those two notes. Take it all down a whole step, meaning two frets. So you're both on 10 and 10. Now I'll do the lowest note first, which is um, 9 and 8. Then 5 and 5. Now you're in C actually. So three and three. Now in two and one. And you're back to C. Make sure I gave this to you right. Twelve and twelve. Ten and ten. Um, nine and eight. Uh, seven and six. Five and five. Three and three. And then hit whatever you want, all three if you want. Well, I usually just hit the two that are actually fretted. Leave that G string out. Okay, so more of that stuff. Even climbing up. Um, if you're um, just climbing up from C. Okay, you're just going from C to F. I said it boom doo doo You can do, you know, make up your own stuff, but if you want to sit around and practice, you can just mute the heck out of these things and just. your practice right there thumb middle finger first finger it's always good to do your little horse okay you can always add in your high E string okay so you have So 
this is a whole rhythmic thing. Um, if you are a palm meter, let me see where the heck my pick went. Okay, I always palm my pick. Okay, so if I have my pick here, this is weird, but I play, when I go to palm my pick and actually play, I play with these three fingers. I'm palming my pick like this. But then I go with the thumb, the first finger, and the pinky. I don't care how y'all do it, but... So you can see my little mess, how I do it here. Pretty weird, looks like a little spider. But yeah, I play with those. So whatever works for you, unless you just want to get rid of the pick. Okay, so um, a little more fun with this will be another idea for this kind of thing, or actually during chords. Um, C chord, okay, just do a regular C bar chord. Okay, I forgot I used the whammy bar, so so, so much for being in tune with the Fender whammy. There it is. Oh, in case anybody wants to know, this here's a, another little toy I got back here, this little Marshall. Um, this here's back from the 80s with the white Tolex, the Marshall Lead 12. So a little 12, 12 watt head. Um, let's get in here just for the gear heads out there. Um, loosen this up a little bit so we can flop around. But that's all she is, kitties. Uh, there we go. So just... No reverb, no nothing, just highs, mid, lows, gain, and volume. So it has a master volume. Each cabinet has a 10-inch um, Celestian in it. Kind of a cool little lamp. So uh, nothing but distortion and clean on these things. And they, most of the time, that's all you need. So today's lesson is completely dry. No effects of any kind, just plugged into the little thing for fun. So anyway... Another vintage, not vintage, just 80s. Maybe it's vintage if to some of you. <laughs> okay, so these chords. Um, regular C chord, let's say. of any use to you you can do it same thing you're just using just a regular C bar chord like this okay and just doing your thumb on the A string and same as we've been doing middle finger you can just lift up your pinkies what I'm doing here and not lifting up the ring finger sounds cool when you hit that B string you know, you're getting kind of a uh, what C suspended second C sus two now you if you lift up your middle finger I'm sorry your pinky and you get that seventh and then you add the two that makes a nine so C ninth both as pull-offs okay so you do the C chord then I actually skip over the C sharp and then do it chromatically so your D chord D sharp E and your F okay okay so that sounds really cool however you want to do it Okay, 
okay? So you can make up whatever works for you, okay? So there's, there's tons of stuff. Make sure you get your fingers nice and black from using, um, yeah, I haven't even put new strings on this one since I bought it. It's got some nasty, let me look in the back. It, the nastiest strings, one of the nastiest strings in the world ever made. The Adarios are in here. Um, so they sound like this. Okay, elixirs, of course. If they were on here, they would sound like... Let's see, what's the guitar that has elixirs on it? Here's one. There's a twang for you. This one, that... Old elixirs on there. Twang, twang. These go... Thud. There's an elixir for you. I mean, a Diodario for you on here. Dead is the day they were bought, and that's what came on this. Okay, so nasty Diodarios. Uh, you can write me about those too. I'll tell you how bad they suck. Uh, anyway, so um, again, that's just uh, showing you some banjo stuff. Not to try to emulate a banjo so much as to give you um, just the technique, a different technique. <laughs> thing do two strings at one time okay so then you're getting in what's called double stops there okay so you know, if you don't want it so noty and so banjoey then instead of hell double stop them Yep, make it nice and staccato. You already know how to play guitar, um, but just work with that right hand. Again, going. Whatever it takes for you to uh, get it working. Um, get it working, get it jerking. If you're doing um, something in C, you know, just doing the A shape thing, do it in C, do it wherever, I don't care. It just happens to be on camera. Um, same thing, D string. B string and G string. It's just the middle finger going to the 6th fret on the B string. Pinky sneaking up to, to the 8th fret. Again, pull-offs. Everything you normally do, and you know, mess around with the right hand. Figure out what does work and what doesn't. Okay, and don't do it all the time. Just fit it in with everything you already have. Okay. So once again, I'll get the heck off here and let myself sleep. Um, uh, so. There you go. Banjo rolls. It's just a technique is all it is. So don't think of it so much as a banjo thing. When you play it on banjo, you know, of course, that's the way you do it. That's the way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if you're like me and never use a pick on the banjos anyway, or any instruments, <laughs> actually, I hardly ever use a pick. But um, just get you into some finger picking. That's just a different way of um, finger picking, a different style. So again, those are just called your banjo rolls. You can sneak them in with... Okay, so you don't have to put them in much. Okay, so you just sneak them in. Okay, so 
put them in a little, put them in a lot, just salt and pepper. Okay, once again, Scott Grove, Banjo Roll Time, and uh, showing you the nice little 30-year-old um, throwback Marshall jobby here. Um, just a little state thing, but it's a fun little practice app. So, um, anyway, happy picking. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.